The paddlefish, also known as the American paddlefish, Mississippi paddlefish, and spoonbill, is a freshwater fish that is primarily found in the open waters of the Mississippi River basin. With the Chinese paddlefish, it was one of just two extant species of paddlefish in the world. In 2020, however, the Chinese paddlefish was declared extinct, leaving the American paddlefish as the only remaining species in the world. Filter feeders. Despite their large size, these fish are filter feeders, subsisting almost entirely off of zooplankton that it consumes by opening its large mouth wide and filtering food from water through its gill rakes. Caviar. Paddlefish roe can be processed into caviar that is similar in color, texture, size, and taste to caviar produced from sturgeon roe from the Caspian Sea. This caused overfishing of the species until restrictions were enacted. One remaining species. Sadly, the Chinese paddlefish, nicknamed the Panda of the Yangtze, was declared extinct in 2020. The last confirmed sighting of the species happened in 2003. Primitive fish. Because they have undergone few changes since the early Cretaceous period, roughly 120 to 125 million years ago, paddlefish are considered to be primitive fish. The only extant species is the American paddlefish, P. spathula. More information about this species is found in the following sections. Until recently, one other species of paddlefish remained in the world. The Chinese paddlefish, P. gladius. Endemic to the Yangtze River Basin, the Chinese paddlefish, also known as the Chinese swordfish and the elephant fish, was larger than the American species. On average, it was around 10 feet in length. The species could attain a size of up to 23 feet long and up to 1,000 pounds, making it one of the largest freshwater species of fish in the world. The largest specimen ever caught measured a record 9.8 feet in length and weighed 661.4 pounds. The Chinese paddlefish also differed significantly from its American counterpart in that it was a highly predatory piscivore meaning that it subsisted almost entirely off of fish. The American species, in contrast, is a filter feeder that subsists almost exclusively off of zooplankton. The largest paddlefish on record, caught in Iowa in 1916, measured 7.1 feet in length, had a girth of 45.5 inches, and weighed more than 198 pounds. These primitive fish have small, poorly developed eyes, wide mouths, and large, paddle-like snouts. Technically known as a rostrum, the snout is actually an extension of the cranium. Its ampulla, or hair cells, contain electroreceptors that can detect electrical fields signaling the presence of prey, typically zooplankton. In fact, these receptors are sensitive enough to detect the individual movements of a zooplankton's appendages, allowing them to forage for prey more effectively. They also have sensory pores on the surface of roughly half of their bodies that also help make up for their poor eyesight. As noted previously, the Chinese paddlefish was declared extinct in 2020. It was classified as critically endangered by the IUCN in 1996. The last confirmed sighting was in 2003, and it is believed to have disappeared between 2005 and 2010. Overfishing in the 1970s depleted its populations, with more than 25 tons being harvested per year. The development of the Gejoba Dam in 1981 split their populations in half disrupting migration patterns and interrupting upstream breeding. The American paddlefish is hardly in the clear. The species has been classified as vulnerable by the IUCN since 2004. Its populations have declined for various reasons, and the species has been extirpated from previous habitats in New York, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Lake Huron, 
and Ontario, Canada. International trade of these fish has been restricted since 1992. Poaching of the species escalated during the 1980s when a trade embargo on Iran restricted imports of beluga caviar from the Caspian Sea. Demand for alternatives, namely caviar from the row of paddlefish and sturgeon, skyrocketed, putting populations at risk. The species is also endangered from the infestation of zebra mussels, an invasive species, in the Mississippi River. Like paddlefish, zebra mussels are filter feeders. They rapidly depleted available levels of zooplankton, causing declines in paddlefish populations. Today, various protections are in place at the state and federal level, and the species is also protected under the CITES Act. Today, the American paddlefish's range is mostly found in the Mississippi River basin across 22 U.S. states. They are found from New York to Montana and south to the Gulf of Mexico. Their habitats mostly consist of medium to large rivers, backwater lakes, and bayous. Thanks to their size, these fish face few predators in the wild. However, they are parasitized by lampreys. A single lamprey typically only wounds the fish. Sometimes, however, multiple lampreys attach to a paddlefish at once, typically killing it. These fish primarily prey on zooplankton, consuming them through filter feeding. However, they are also known to occasionally consume small insects and their larvae and small fish. The American paddlefish is a long-lived fish with an average lifespan of around 30 years. They don't reach sexual maturity until later in life. Females reach sexual maturity between the ages of 7 and 10 on average. Some don't until as late as 16 to 18 years of age. Males typically reach sexual maturity around the age of 7, but some don't until as late as 9 to 10 years of age. These fish spawns during the late spring. The conditions have to be exactly right. If things like temperature, water flow, and gravel substrate availability aren't optimal, they may not spawn at all. Females are believed to spawn every second or third year while males spawn every year or every other year. These fish migrate upstream to spawn. Their precise migration range is unclear but they have been known to travel more than 2,000 miles in a river system. As broadcast spawners, or mass spawners, females release their eggs onto bare gravel and rocks. At the same time, males release their sperm. Fertilization happens externally, and the adhesive eggs become attached to rocky substrates. The average incubation time is around 7 days. Young is then swept downstream to develop in deep freshwater ponds.